Good evening and welcome to the Grain Valley High School Theater Virtual Showcase. Thank you so much for joining us tonight or if you're joining us on video later. Um, we were disappointed that we didn't get to do our production of The Giver as originally planned, uh, but we still wanted to provide you with a performance this semester. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy tonight's performance. And if there's anybody you know who wanted to see it, who didn't get a chance to, just let them know that this will all be posted on YouTube uh, and it will be posted on the Grain Valley uh, High School Theater social media pages uh, by Monday. All right, uh, without further ado, we are gonna go ahead and start with our first performance for the evening. And it comes from senior Jarrett Dietz. Hello, um, I will be performing uh, my storytelling I did this year for Speech and Debate entitled, I Need My Monster by Amanda Knoll. Tonight when I looked under my bed for my monster, all I found was this note. <clears throat> Gone fishing, be back in a week, love, gay. What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I mean, I tried to sleep, but it just wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing, his nose whistling, oh, and the scrabbling of his uncut claw. Oh, it was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week, and I just had to have a monster. So I got out of bed, knocked on the floorboards, and scrambled back under my cupboard. When I heard some creaking underneath my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Hello, my name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for this evening. Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I have read all the best books on the subject. Well, do you at least have long teeth and scratchy claws? Well, no, I have an overbite and I'm a, a mouth breather. Well, Herbert, I I'm sorry, but I just don't think this is going to work. I really need a monster with claws. As you wish, I'll go. And then Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening. My name is Ralph and I understand that you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horribly shaggy arm with sharp ragged nails, but instead, I was surprised to see sleekly brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. And, excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but is that nail polish on your claws? Why, yes. I believe all professional monsters need to be well-groomed. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with big, scary claws. Then Ralph left. A third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid! The claws were impressive. Jagged, dark, and razor sharp. So far, so good, but could you stick out your tail? I looked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow on the end. Are you a girl monster? You got a problem with that? Well, uh, yeah. Aren't you a picky one? I'm out of here. And then he was gone. Was I being too picky? <laughs> no. The whole point of having a monster after all was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. I heard some slobbering, and the fourth monster was under my bed. Hello, my name is Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. Maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws, Mac. But do you have a long tail? 
Well, no, but I do have an unusually long tongue. <laughs> Tell me, why should I be afraid of a long tongue? Well, oh, I, I don't know, but I really don't think you should send me away. You know, kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight. My regular monster went fishing. <laughs> fishing? Sounds to me that he just left you because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear some more creaking underneath my bed. Sorry I'm late, kid. It was Gabe! Oh, I thought I'd enjoy fishing, but I didn't. You know, those fish scare too darn easy, and it's no challenge at all. But you, however, are a champion. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. You keep me on my toes. So, um, you had substitute monsters tonight? I could tell Gabe was trying to find out if I still needed them. No other monster could scare me like you, Gabe. Oh, I knew it! You and I were made for each other! Gabe was back, and everything was back to normal. I knew I'd be asleep in no time. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Our next performance will be from senior Michaela Milliken. Hi there, my name is Michaela Milliken. I'm a senior uh, in the Green Valley High School Theater and I'm performing a piece called Never Would Have Known. This is a piece that I wrote myself. Um, it's poetry. Uh, during this entire quarantine is kind of what inspired me to write this. <sighs> You know, sometimes when you lay in bed and your mind wanders, whether it be questioning the length of space or how much your mind can take, I do it all the time, but I never would have known. It's like when you're alone and your mind can't help but make up scenarios of the same situation in such silence. Sometimes it's even scary the things the mind can make up on its own, we never would have known. I could run the scenarios through my head as though it were a movie on a tape. Play, pause, rewind. The same thing yet again. Footage from behind the scenes will occasionally appear. And I'm left on my lonesome to shy away from the fear. The fear that one day images in my mind will project on the screen before my eyes and I'll be standing before what I prayed wouldn't show but I'll never know neither will you I can say for us all we've all had expectations expecting to grow like the grass beneath our feet expecting to flow as though water in a stream and expecting to know no, stop. None of us ever expected what is happening today. I could say that God knows, but I never would have known that I'd be sitting here faltering in various ways to the point where I'm unrecognizable. Removing myself from every equation, swaying from reality and a future sure I've never been more uncertain of. They say things happen for a reason, but do they really? No. I do believe things happen for a reason. We become closer as humans when we remember our appreciation for each other. We remind ourselves that we're only one person, that we are who we are because of our core. That there's only one world we live in, and so far, we've done a pretty awful job at handling it with care. You can give me all 
the judgment, and all the thoughts you want. But deep down, we know it's true. Humanity is Earth's biggest threat, causing damage beyond recognition within our lakes, our oceans, and our air. For once, we can see it. With humans being too busy to continue to lay waste across this land, the air is cleaner, the skies are more blue, we can see the stars at night. Change needed to occur, but in this way? Without a pandemic on our hands, we never would have known. Without such a contagion and decay within the economy below what's been expected, so much is unknown. No one knew, and no one knows. The population is frightened. We fear the worst as a species because that is how humanity works. Clawing for a safe place, crushing others for comfort. Alert, not anxious, they say. But those of us that fear the worst dread the unforeseen future. Panic rises and hatred seeds beyond our locked doors. Seclusion is our safety. And yet there's little thought for those other than ourselves. The elderly stand by because what else has their defense? I can tell you it's not the immune system, bearing weakness beyond the standard human. For being the last ones to be respected, and what if they got? Selfishness and such an unforgiving nature. But of all things, such kindness they give instead of hate. I, of all people, never would have known. I recently heard a story of a woman over the edge of 70, turning down a ventilator, claiming she'd had a full life and to give it to someone in need. She passed away not long after that. Others may not have known. I have a feeling she knew. But they'll never know. Time has been cruel. Patience has worn paper thin. We can't continue to be selfish. Those standing six feet away from you bear the same trouble, if not more. Have patience and sympathy. Be kind to others, smile or wave. The best way to overcome this is to strength as one. Not ruthless bickering over unnecessary words or behavior. Challenging rules to keep us safe. Don't let this dark time unsettle you. If anything, be motivated. You've seen the worst, so make it the best. We may be the ones who never knew, but I think we're the ones that will come through. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. All right, our next performance will be from Junior Alex Kronke. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex Kronke, and uh, I will be performing a monologue from Macbeth by the bard himself, William Shakespeare. There would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty place from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all of our yesterdays have lighted fools to death. Out, 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 brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound 
and fury signifying nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Our next performance will be from Junior Haley Elkins. Is this, is this thing on? Um, yeah, I'm a junior and this camera's garbage, but um, I'm doing a monologue from um, Too Fabulous to Fail by Don Zelitis. <coughs> Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me, Jim? Because I'm talking. <laughs> there are sounds coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Tell me they're not disappearing into thin air because that, Jim, would be a waste of my time, you understand? Look, I'm looking at the numbers, Jim. Uh, 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 you're darn right. I got them right here. At first, at first I thought I was dreaming, you know, like I was in some kind of nightmare where there's a wolf chasing you and you're falling and you're dressed up as Little Red Riding Hood. And that's what I thought was going on here because I'm looking at these numbers and I'm a little confused. What the heck is going on? Oh, I am calm. <laughs> I'm very calm. You have not seen me upset, Jim. You are not aware of what I'm like when I'm upset. This is, this is calm, Marcus. This is Marcus under very tight control. But play along with me here. Let's say tightly controlled Marcus has a nice dinner and goes off on an evening stroll through the park and gets replaced by upset Marcus. Do you know what upset Marcus is going to do? <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now. He's going to dress up like a window washer and get one of those pulley things and climb up the outside of your office when you least expect it. And he's going to have one of those cat burglar circular knives that they use to cut through glass. And when you're sitting there having your $6 macchiato from Starbucks, upset Marcus is going to reach through the window behind you, grab you by the throat, pull you through the tiny circular hole in your window and dangle you off the 22nd story. Spider-Man isn't gonna save you, Jim. You know why? Do you know why Spider-Man isn't gonna come save you? <laughs> because he hates you, Jim. He knows about how much you're a skunk. And instead of swinging in on his little spider ropes, he's sitting in his Mercedes having a latte. I know, I know their webs, not ropes. I know that. I, I know, I know their webs. I know he doesn't use ropes. How could he, how could he shoot ropes out of his hand? Well, 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 that's neither here nor there, Jim. Uh, look, I don't care what kind of polymer Peter Parker uses to synthesize his webbing. And point of fact, in several iterations of Spider-Man, the webbing just came right out of him like a spider. Of course, if we were being accurate, the webs would be coming out of his butt, and I think we all can agree that that's a little gross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good talking to you, too. Remember what I said about dangling you out of the window. Yeah. Uh, bye bye Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Our next performance will be from Junior Caitlin Hesenius. Hi, I'm going to be performing this, a monologue from Dystopia, The Hungry Maze Game of Divergent Death by Don Zelinas. If I know anything, it's time for the main character to make an inspirational speech. And that's just what I'm about to do. At first, when I got here, I thought, I can't make an inspirational speech. I was scared. I was alone. After Black died, I thought, I'm never going to be able to do it. I can't be the main character I want to be. 
I'm gonna die. And they're gonna forget about me. They're gonna put my name like halfway down the credits and just forget about me. I almost gave up. But you know what saved me? I looked into a mirror and I remembered something. I'm not just anybody. I'm not some nameless girl who's gonna be crushed by low budget special effects. No, I am the white girl. And the white girl who makes the inspirational speech does not die. Now, you may be asking yourself, am I as cool as her? No. No, you're not. But you will live on in my heart. Now, I'll give you all nicknames because I didn't bother to learn them and we don't have time for that anyways. Pokey, we like this man. <sighs> Jim Bob, you always made you smile. Fancy Pants Malone, at first, I didn't like you. Puddle face, you can't help that you look like that. And Scarecrow, I think I'm gonna miss you most of all. And now, you know what? It's that time in the inspirational speech where I start shouting things and you start cheering. They said I couldn't do this speech. They said my voice wasn't loud enough. Well, I want them to hear my voice is plenty loud and it will continue to get louder. I will say things louder and louder and louder until the whole world can hear me shouting. This is the part where you start clapping. Here, I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Our final performance of the evening will come from senior Tori Sieber. Hi, I'm going to be performing a monologue, Lady Macbeth monologue from act one, scene seven of William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Was the hope drunk wherein you dress yourself? Hath it slept since and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely from this time such i account thy love art thou a fear to be the same in thy own act and valor as thou art in desire wouldst thou have that which thou esteemed the ornament of life and live a coward in thy own esteem letting i dare not Wait upon, I would, like the poor cat in the adage. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than that you were, you would be so much more than a man. Nor time, nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. And I would, while the babe was smiling in my face, have plucked this from its boneless gums and bashed its brains out as I have sworn to do so as you have done today. And if we fail, then we fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we shall not fail. When Duncan is asleep, whereto the rather shall his long day's journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and with sail, so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume and the receipt of reason, a limbic only. When in swine asleep, the trench nature lies as it lies in death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great 
Cool. Thank you. All right, we're going to give one final round of applause to all of our performers this evening. Yay! All right, thank you so much for joining us uh, for our Grain Valley High School Virtual Theater Showcase. Uh, we really appreciate all the support that you're giving to us during this difficult time. Um, and if there's anyone you know who uh, missed tonight's performance or did not have a GVR5 uh, email account, uh, just tell them that we will be posting this entire performance on YouTube by Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. We cannot wait to do theater again for you when it is safe to do so. Good night. <laughs>